There's one more statement I've been asked to uh, comment upon. Theurgy is similar to alchemy in that it is renewing the human to a primal stage as it was before the fall. Alchemy as well as theurgy are a magnum opus, a mighty work, or you could say a fundamental work. Um, yes, I would agree to that. and. Um, I would say that actually theurgy might be considered a, con a continuation of alchemy. In alchemy we are basically peeling away um, obstructions, dirt, um, to purify ourselves. And we start of course by peeling out the lowest things like the lower vibrations like aggressions, desires, um, hatreds, um, inflexibilities, um, attachments. Um, and once these lower parts start being moved out, of course, then our spirit starts to be revealed because it's no longer encased in its surroundings, in its society, in its own history. Um, and in its own, you could say, animal or instinctive form, which gives rise to a lot of low vibrations. So alchemy is indeed restoring us to a very primal stage, but when it comes to purifying what is, in a way, already the, the essence of the human, uh, their alchemy is starting to lose effectiveness. So. Alchemy is very effective in the beginning with dealing with the heavier energies, but dealing with the higher energies the effectiveness is starting to, to level off a little bit. Um, as soon as we are working with things which are in a way beyond the, the world of form, um, it becomes more, much more difficult to apply alchemical phases or alchemical techniques. Um, we can still, of course, use the, the secret fire, but for instance, to create an Athanor without form, it is impossible to, to contain that fire or to focus that fire upon a specific part of our being. And in a way to continue that work, with the, the hidden fire, I would say then theurgy is almost a necessary step. So I would say more that alchemy would ultimately need theurgy, not to level off, but to keep the curve going. But similarly theurgy, while people are still in the very impure stages, is essentially an impossibility, because we cannot reach the formless cosmos. We cannot rid ourselves of these lower powers, so we need alchemy or yoga or uh, something else to transform these lower bonds which make us human, which make us uh, one specific person, which makes us male or female or young or old or confined in some manner to break through to the level of higher magic. Um, because there is a very big difference between, um, you could say, mimicking uh, higher powers and acting like a higher power. Of course, we can study um, the acts of higher powers. We can see that angels do things or gods do things and we can duplicate the effects of what an angel does or what a, what a deity does. But this is not theurgy. This is still thaumaturgy because we're still acting upon the physical world. And of course it can give us a lot of insight and knowledge to study these higher beings and to emulate them. Um, but ultimately if we're talking about the evolution of, of our spirit, um, we need to, uh, to work with the purification process. And magic is not, it can be used for 
purification, but essentially it is about manifestation. But this manifestation can be a very valuable mirror, because ultimately what is within will manifest without. And by what we manifest and how it manifests, we can track down lots of imbalances and impurities, but this is also what makes magic so dangerous. Because indeed our impurities, our hidden sides, our repressed darkness will manifest if we start practicing magic, especially if we go more into theurgic magic, which is less easily controlled and contained than tomaturgy. So it's a great tool to learn more about yourself. But it is not by necessity elevating your consciousness or evolving your spirit. It is by how we deal with the lessons, how we work with the effects of the thaumaturgic, uh, of the theurgic effects we create, that we can ultimately grow in our consciousness and can imp improve our wisdom and our understanding of the cosmos. So, are they both a magnum opus? Yes, because they are I think essential parts um, which can help us to attain enlightenment. Both are of course magical techniques because they are very much dependent upon discipline, upon willpower, upon concentration and other magical talents. Um, but I wouldn't say that either by themselves is a magnum opus and ultimately for me the magnum opus is not reaching a state of enlightenment as where both uh, theurgy and uh, alchemy could lead us to. For me the magnum opus would be becoming one with the divine and ultimately also by using the, the power and control we have gained not through our own will but only through the will of the divine and thereby becoming more angelic in nature. Um, so, one other thing which is also what, what many people fail to realize if they go on the magical path is that um, the drive to work magic becomes harder and harder to maintain the closer you get to a state of enlightenment. Um, because when we're in a, in a low state of consciousness, it's very easy for us to focus. We have desires, we have a will which is focused on something very concrete, something very concrete effect, which we consider to be worthwhile, which we can motivate ourselves to. Um, taking away pain, helping somebody, um, having good luck, um, making a fortune. But as we evolve spiritually, the goals become less and less able to um, be manifested uh, through magical means because our, we simply won't have such desires anymore, we won't have such attachments anymore, we won't have such rejections anymore if our state of awareness increases and if you are no longer trying to banish disease or pain or sadness then there's also less, you could say, opportunity to focus and manifest your will. So it's the periods of your practicing your spiritual discipline will tend to grow further and further apart because there will be less and less need because you will also start working on a higher and higher level which will be less and less individualized. So usually a third is not so much working on themselves but working on the planet or mankind and mankind is of course yeah uh, in need of some help or some change but not every moment of every day or even every month or even every year so the higher the consciousness gets the in a way less opportunities there will be for action but the action itself will be more and more um, on a grander and grander scale. And in that way you're also 
growing your consciousness by working on higher and higher scales so getting more and more this perspective of uh, a higher being but ultimately the will as we know it um, won't exist because only the pure will will still remain and this is ultimately why your spirit separated itself from the from the divine because there was a difference in will between your spirit and the divine and for a third um, it will become more and more clear as they're acting in how their own manifestations are different from the manifestations of the divine itself and by not being in love with your own power with your own ability to manifest but rather being very critical of your ability to manifest and comparing it with ultimate manifestations as done by the highest powers this is how we grow ourselves not by the exercise of power a lot but rather by comparing how we do things to how the greater masters do things so i hope this has uh, given some insight into uh, the uses of theurgy and alchemy for human development or spiritual development in general thank you for listening to this series about hermetic magic and thank you for sending in these questions.